Yup, I'm am. I'm on Periscope. Wow, eight folks already. Hey guys, how are you? Okay, so I've been um, watching a couple of different folks. Hey, and um, they've been giving some tips, you know, on effective periscoping. So I'm going to implement two rules when I'm doing these warm up Wednesdays and sound check Sundays. Two things we're going to start doing um, so I can properly greet you. Would you just let me know your name by doing a, a, a dash and then your name so I can properly Greet you. I want to say hi to you. I want to know who's on here. And, and also, you know, because some of your tag names, you don't know who you are by your tag name. And so sometimes you might see somebody that, um, hey, Darius Hughes, Aaron. Hey, y'all. DG. <laughs> hey, y'all. Uh, Chris Henson. It's good to see you, sir. A lot of Deanna's friends. Malcolm, what's happening? Hey, so yeah, hash, put your, I keep wanting to say hashtag dash, Greg Wiggins, what's up, man? How are you, sir? Um, so in addition to that, um, because this is a vocal, hi, LaToya, um, because it's a vocal session, thank you, sir, um, I, I want to make sure that, um, that the things that I'm giving you that, you know, Nana Boo, thanks, babe. <laughs> Mark Chambers, nice to see you, sir. I want to make sure that this is this is not just a oh let's just turn this periscope on and just see what she's she has to say. But especially if you are a singer or you are um, a person who speaks and you use your voice often. Hi, Gabriel. Uh, remember to remember our new rule. You want to put a dash and your name so I can see you, who you are. So if you're just joining us, what, go ahead and put a dash and your name. Um, but the other rule is going to be that um, w when I give you a text technique or something to do, I want you to type in, hi Shante, I want you to type the letter V for vocals so I'll know that you're participating, that you're doing what I'm asking you to do, all right? I want to make sure that you are on task. That's just the teacher in me. I have to make sure that all of my students are on task. Here comes Dion Ananabu. Are you, you're on here as well? Yeah. Now yeah. say hi to Diana. Hi. That's my baby. She's getting ready to go away to college in a few days. So y'all pray for us. Pray for her. Pray for me. <laughs> but it's good. So at any rate, um, yesterday, Monday, Dion and I had a chance to go and sit with um, my good friend, Dr. Jeffrey Redding. And Dr. Redding, um, he is a an internationally known choir director, um, currently at West Orange High School, but he's um, been asked to come and do different clin clinics for choirs all over the world. Thank you so much for the hearts. Deanna, is that you? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, also you can you can definitely um, give the hearts while we're uh, talking about the techniques and stuff, just to let me know that you're on point. Um, but so Jeff, uh, really, it was really great to be able to go and sit with him because um, a lot of you don't know, I do have a degree in vocal performance um, from Morris Brown College, dear old Morris Brown in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I'm a member of the Delta, Delta Omicron Music Fraternity, um, and I was a music teacher for six years in a public school system. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, it, but it's been a long time since I've had an opportunity to really learn and, um, you know, be coached vocally. However, I am classically trained. That's like how I first learned to sing was um, being trained classically first. I've done a couple of operas in school and, um, you know, sang in foreign you know, languages and all of that good stuff. Hey, love you too, man. Good to see you. Hope all is well with you and your family. Um, so I, I wanted to um, connect with Jeff so he could, number one, make sure that, that, I'm, that I'm in good, good vocal health. Um, and then also to just bring back to my remembrance a lot of the things that I that I do, but uh, I want to make sure that the technique is correct and that what I'm saying and what I'm teaching is, is also correct. Um, because I'm going to, I want to start doing this more often. Um, a lot of times as gospel singers and worship leaders, you know, we've got it 
we are in God's presence and we understand worship and we're learning about that. And it's, you know, I'm not in any way negating, um, negating that, but I do want to be able to give us an opportunity to make sure that the assignment that we have on our lives to sing and to lead people in God's presence, that we are able to do that for a long time. You know, it's nothing more sad and nothing that hurts me more than to hear a great, um, singer whose voice you know, they sound like when they're talking, they sound like they've been gargling on rocks. You know what I'm saying? You know, like they're they're raspy. They have their vocal cords are in shreds because they don't take care of their voice. And um, one of the things that Jeff made a comment about, and so I'm going to be referencing him. I'm be, I'm maybe referencing um, some other places that I do. I'm, I'm going to be doing research on. But one of the things that he said is that we want to make sure that we have lifelong healthy singing. So, um, you know, you'll see that uh, in my hashtags from now on, lifelong healthy singing. We want to make sure that we are singing in a healthy manner so that way we can be singing for the rest of our lives. You know, um, we all, I always joke and say we only have one pair of vocal cords. That's all we have is one pair of vocal cords. And there is no uh, place for us to go and take our vocal cords to the store and, and get a new pair. You you know, all you got is one. That's all you got. So that's all you have. <laughs> but, um, you know, so you want to make sure that you are doing the best that you can, doing everything that you can to be good stewards over the gift and over the the the, um, the gift that God has given you. Um, so um, something else that he pointed out that made me it, it, it clicked for me, it just made sense for me, was that. Um, as gospel singers, and I wrote it down, he said, as gospel singers, we um, do a lot of singing in our chest voice. And that that's normally the place where we normally sing. I say gospel singers, but just singers in general um, that are not singing classically or that are not using um, your your hit, your um, your. Uh, mask or singing in the correct placement, we sing in our chest voice and we sing from our chest voice and we go as high as we can go in our chest voice and then we'll flip over to um, our head voice or a falsetto. And there's there's a big gap, you know, which it may be two or three notes, but, you know, when you're singing, there's a gap there of, of notes. There's a gap of voicing that you are missing if you don't know how to use your mixed voice. And so that's one of the things that we want to talk about just a little bit today is mix, mixed voicing. And what that means is going from your thank you for the heart. That means you're going from your chest voice up to your head voice without um, without missing the middle voice. OK. Um, and how do we do that? We do that by learning the placement of your voice. So, again, we've got our chest voice. We have our head voice. But then we've got that middle voicing that we've got to learn how to figure out. And, um, you know, one thing when I was working with him, it was like, oh, I totally forgot about that. And you know, I was able to get there, but even like now, just sitting here and talking with you, I can tell that I'm totally talking in my chest voice. And that's why I said, you know, on the title, the tag of this broadcast, thanks for the hearts. I appreciate you. Um, that's why I was saying in the title that voice warm ups is not just for singers because people who speak and talk all day, radio personalities, teachers, um, people who are on telemarketing, you're on the telephone all day. If you are talking, talking, talking all the time, eventually you're going to have a sore throat. You're going to lose your voice. It's going to be raspy. You know, you'll have vocal issues because you're not, you don't have your voice in the correct placement. Okay. Um, so resonance, resonance, R-E-S-O-N-A-N-C-E. -E. Can you type that in for me? Resonance, resonance, um, resonance is um, it has to deal with where the sound is placed resonance. So if you were to look at your head or you looked at a skull and you noticed, you know, you saw where the where the nose. Yep, you got it. Creating the buzz. And so if you looked where um, where the nose would be or just looking at the skull without a brain in it, without any thought, anything in it, the sound creates vibration in the skull okay and resonance is is what is created by that vibration i hope that makes sense so how do we get to a place of resonance where we can create like chris said creating the buzz we're going to do that and jeff had me do this a snarl yesterday and when i first did it thank you for the hearts when i first did it it hurt 
because I've never done it before. So this is where I want you, when you get ready to do this, um, you're welcome. Um, I want you to remember to type in a V for me, for vocal, to let me know that you're doing this. So when you snarl, you want to bring in the air through your nose in this area here. And yeah, it's your snarling, snarling, snorting. Um, when I do it, it's funny because I always do it when I'm working at um, the house of the mouse. And um, one of my lines is for my guests, to, I say, um, now let me hear you snort like a warthog. And so a lot of times they don't, I'm, either they're you know speaking a foreign language or they don't know what I'm saying. So I'll demonstrate for them and I'll snort. <clears throat> excuse me, I'll snort um, in my throat, you know, like that. But when you snort, can I get a V? Um, I want you to snort, snarl, thank you, through your nose, okay? There. So try it. Thank you, Deanna. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Aaron. So when you try that, when you do that, that vibration, yep, that you're feeling here and there, that is the place where you want your vocals to, that's where you want your voice to be placed. Thank you for those Vs. I appreciate y'all being on task. Good stuff. You're great students. Um, so that's the place where you want your, that's the place where you want to feel um, the vocal. It did tickle. Yeah. That's where you want to feel um, your sound. That's where you want to feel the vibration right in that area. Okay. Um, I'm sitting at my piano. Y'all, my piano is ages old. Deanna said it should feel empty and airy almost. So try that unless you have mucus and snot in there. So if you do, you, you know, you want to make sure you get all of that stuff out because, you know, the ears, <laughs> the ears, the nose and the throat. <laughs> The ears and nose and the throat, they're all connected, you know. So if you have mucus and snot and stuff like that in there and you do that, it's going to go down your throat. That's just what's going to happen. So when you snarl, that is your point of reference of what you where you want to feel. Yeah, mucus is real. Yes, mucus is real. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I had a student ask a, a question. Could you give the example again? So, okay, so snarling is here. Okay. Sorry. And it's it's weird because I'm just learning how to do this, but that's where it is. Okay. Um, you got that? You're welcome. All right. So let's do some lip trills. Um, bef before, yeah, let's do some lip trills. And so I was saying I was on my piano, which is a little bit out of tune because my mother bought this piano for me before she didn't buy it for me. She bought it for my oldest sister when she was taking piano when she, when she was, um, she's 16 years older than me. So that can tell you how uh, old this piano is. Um, so I'm going to just, I hope this isn't going to be too loud. Y'all tell me if it's too loud. Okay. Um, let me do this Put it here. There we go. So I'm going to start on the middle C and we'll just do a lip trill going up. Um, just okay you ready one two here we go and give me a V if you're participating thank you <laughs> keep going right there thank you so much Marquita for following so um, in these lip trills remember that you want to make sure that you are feeling the not only the buzz and the tickling of your nose but you want to feel some type of pressure here in this area so snarl again that's the place where you want to hear that sound that you want to feel that sound when you're doing your lip trills okay so let's go back down we'll go to an A flat and we'll keep going up one two Three. Two more. Last one. 
on. Very good. Very, very, very good. So how are you feeling? Are you able to tell, feel a difference there with the uh, with the sound up in your nose? Are you able to feel, even with just a lip trill, are you able to feel just a little bit of a, um, just uh, the resonance there in your, that's right, up in your ear, in that nose, in your nasal cavity there. Um, let's, good. If you're feeling it there, I want to try this. Let's go back to a C again. Good job. Let's go back to a C again and let's do, um, let's hum because um, when, you, when you do your lip trills, what's happening is you are relaxing all of your throat muscles. You shouldn't feel any pressure here. Um, bringing that tone to the front should, not, should allow you to not have any pressure here. Okay, um, we haven't even talked about breathing and when you take your breath, all of that's moving. We haven't even addressed that yet. The only thing that we're talking about is bringing a focus point for your tone and not having any stress here in your throat. Okay, remember um, last week, I think it was that we talked about being relaxed in your body and not having any pressure here. No stress here is where you want, where what you want. No stress here. It is, the sky has opened up. It is raining in sunny Florida, but don't worry, it'll, yeah. Please watch the playback, Marquita, absolutely. Um, so we're, we're going to start at the at middle C again, and this time let's, let's hum. So when you're humming, separate the teeth. If you saw the video today that I posted of Deanna, um, with Dr. Redding, he was telling her to keep her teeth separated inside the hum. So it would be A lot of times when we hum, we just want to In fact, do that for me. Do it the wrong way first. You should feel all kind of pressure here. Yeah. Try that. It doesn't feel good. It might hurt a little bit, but just try it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Lifting the soft palate. I haven't even talked about that yet. Um, but now, now snar snarl for me again so you can get that placement again. Yeah. And then go back to with your teeth separated and the tone back here. Do you notice that my, vo my voice sounds different? even just doing a couple of warm-ups here. So let's try humming on uh, just... Here we go, ready? Two, keep the teeth open and... Good job, good job. All right, does this make sense for you guys? Is this helping any? I know you're probably trying to figure out. Now, how do I sing? Um, God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, right? How do you do that? So the, the good thing about finding the, 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 um, the placement, um, like I've started out say, saying, was that it's a good place of reference for when you are needing that middle voice you know if you find yourself singing a note or singing a part of a song that's too high that you can't cover in your chest voice then you will go to your mixed voice which is where all, this is like your sweet spot this is your the place where the where the where the magic happens where the resonance is going there's a buzz here and you can sing all you know you want it's it's a lot of muscle memory so it might take some time in doing that but um this is so this is the this is your point of reference this is where you go in those times when the song becomes too high or you are vocally fatigued and you can't you know perform or sing like you normally do then you go to that um to that place of that mixed 
you go to that place where that mixed voice is. You go to that middle voice where the resonance is, okay? Um, I hope this is good and that you guys are in, this is making sense for you. Um, I have some water. Do you have water? Yes or no? V, 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 yes, you have water. Or silence, no hearts, you don't have water. You don't have... I ain't no water. Ain't got now? Hmm. <laughs> All right. See, sí, verdad. Está bien. Good stuff. Um. Okay. Let's see. What else do I have written here? So, um, let me just la leave you with that to give you for warm ups. Um, between now, if you have not had your midweek service between now and um, and Sunday when we'll meet up again. And don't be afraid to do this every day. Good vocal health. You know, they tell you that you should stretch every day um, to just be healthy in your body in general. If you do some type of warm up in the morning before you get going, you know, maybe while you're preparing, you getting in the shower or whatever, you know, and you get do your snarl. You're welcome, Yolanda. You do your snarl so you can find your placement. And then you do your... Um, you know, well, first, remember, we talked about uh, just waking up those vocal cords in the morning. And that's just to get them moving. And then you get your snarl going there. And then you do your lip trills. This, all of this happens after you've warmed up your lower register. Okay? So you want to make sure that all of your lower register is ready to go. The placement and everything happens after that's warmed up and you're ready to start um, creating sound and you're ready to start preparing your voice for singing and singing in the area that you'll be singing for that day. Um, I would like to encourage you to to sing um, after you after you found your placement with the snarl. Yay! After you found the placement with the snarl and you've done the, the your hump your uh, your lip trill and then you started humming with your teeth separated with the buzz in your nose. Try singing one of your songs that you'll be singing that day um, in that place. Will that be the where you sing for worship? It might not be, but at least you'll be able to tell. Um, you'll be able to have a point of reference of where uh, where that where the where the rescue spot is, where this where that safe place is for you. Does that make sense? Um, to sing a song in that place, so. Um, so, for example, um, that God, God is fine. God, this is not right. So, this was this is where I would normally sing. God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness. All in here, lining up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. Right. But if I wanted to sing it in a forward place, um, who, who, who. God, God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeat, defeated, defeated. Yeah, so there's a difference there. No pressure here, more focused tone here okay all right guys i think that's all i'm gonna give you for right now it's starting to lighten lighten and thundering and, and i'm sitting right in front of the window my mama used to tell me when it was lightning that you close the windows and the blinds and you go sit out somewhere and be quiet so i'm gonna do that um uh, thank you guys so much for joining me today um i want to remind you that if you I, I did have someone order some thieves spray today um, so if you are looking for some throat spray that is all natural, that would be so wonderful for you, uh, for your for your uh, lifelong healthy singing. Oh, that was lightning, Lord. Um, I will uh, email me, inbox me, and I'll send you the link to where you can order that thieves spray. I think it's $11.95 uh, when you order it online. So thank you for the hearts. And I hope that this has helped you out a lot. Tell somebody about it and we'll see you Sunday morning for Sound Check Sunday or next Wednesday for a warm up Wednesday. Hey, I love you and I'm excited for your future. Have a great day.